right. Now we want to go back to Mr. Dennis Brennan. And he's, this time Dennis is going to be talking to us about the diorama that he's building to show us uh, some of his products, uh, his ballast. This is his. Uh, this is what he started his company with. So Dennis, it's up to you to uh, to talk about your product and your ballast in your All diorama. Right. Okay. Um, um, thank you, Jim. And gentlemen, we're going to continue um, where we left off. I'm going to briefly go through the stuff. So um, I'm even starting a timer, Jim, just just so I don't go too long. All right. Share screen. Uh, here we go. All right. Here's where we started last time. Um, very quickly, it's just construction foam. Um, the track is going to go along here. The marks that you see on here are, um, I laid out the building. This is a diorama. It's going to feature my, my uh, a siding track. And this is for the new kit that I'm coming out with. And um, that's going to be used for advertising purposes um, and to show off the model. Um, so... Uh, We'll just, uh, we'll just, this is a street. These are sidewalks. This is the actual building. And so we went from there and you can see how I drew this stuff out. And a little note, the foam is easily glued. I don't use construction adhesive. I use regular white glue. I spread it out with a brush. I pour some on there and I cover the whole surface with a brush, spread it out flat. Not just a little thing. I just cover everything and then stick it down. And once that's and put some weight on it, some books. I have an old set of encyclopedias. Once that's done, um, it ain't coming up. All right. So then, um, real briefly, I uh, I had to change um, the elevation from from the sheer wall. So I just cut a couple pieces of foam and just slapped them in there. A little interest, I added the same kind of walls that uh, that we saw before. <laughs> and um, uh, I didn't purposely didn't make these perfectly vertical because I figured they're trying to hold back. So they, they canted those walls a little bit as they were building them. Um, and th at least that's the story. Um, that's my reasoning for doing that. And then this little piece here is my interpretation of, uh, there's a hole up here, which you'll see later. Um, this is going to be a concrete bunker um, uh, that is a, a coal bin underneath this building that will be here. Um, in times past, it needed coal delivery. Now it's been repurposed, so this isn't going to be used anymore, but I designed that little thing. Um, and then um, masking tape. I use masking tape all the time to do stuff like this. I just shove paper in there um, to a basic shape. And I, I could have used foam, but I wanted to do this and give it a little more just to show what you could do. Um, and then I used some real rocks here, which I, I then filled everything in with... Um, Here's this, the tape. I also use this little wall here. These are HO, by the way. And, uh, you know, they work fine for our scale. If anybody starts coming up um, measuring rocks and measuring the actual boards, <laughs> you know, then they're missing the whole thing. Um, anyway, you can see you just do a few layers of tape until you get it where you want it and you can push it and shove it and move it. And I'll tell you what, once it's down and you paint it, I use brown latex paint over everything. It's always the base coat. Um, you can see the paper here. Um, this was just some shipping paper I had and I shoved it in there and I'm going to put sculpt them all over that uh, or sell you clay. Here's what I made that little concrete thing out of. It's just foam core. And um, uh, I, uh, as long as you coat the, the foam itself with white glue, which is what I do, I coat it with white glue, let that set, then you can spray it with spray paint and you're not going to eat the foam away. 
a little trick that I came up with. Uh, and this is a, a great concrete looking paint. It's um, um, uh, a, uh, a Rust-Oleum multicolored, finely textured paint. It's not that big texture that, that they used to sell. This is really finely textured. And what I like is not the texture as much as I really like the idea that it's, it's variegated in color. And that really adds to the concrete look. And what you see here is the frame for the building. Um, I had these little blocks. This I uh, rather than build put the building on a solid base, I le I left it open, and I can just slip it on over this. It also puts the building at the same height as the sidewalks, which is what I wanted. And what you see here are little pieces of um, uh, brick, plastic brick that I glued down there. Uh, this will all get covered with uh, uh, dorms water putty, skim coated. And I will maybe cover some of these up completely. I just wanted to have enough here so that I can mess around with it when I get to this point. The idea being that it was, this is an older building. This is an old area of town. And um, uh, there was originally cobblestone along here. All right. And so you can see this little bunker I built. I even cut it out here and put this around. And another trick that I do now, this is all leading up to ballasting. I know it's taken a while to get there, but you can't just start ballasting. You got to think about what the scenery is going to be. So I always try to do a little bit of scenery alongside the, the track. Now, do you do it before you ballast or do you do it after you ballast? Yes. It's up to you. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, I wanted to get an idea. And uh, because it's a hillside, um, I decided to um, do a little bit of scenery work first. Now, you can see the sculpt mold over here. I covered it up over here. And this is how I got this to slope in. Okay, here's more of the sculpt mold. And you can see I just work with it. Uh, I like it a lot. It's real easy to work with. And uh, I add a little brown paint to the mixture. And then I then coat it again. You can see it was lighter colored um, uh, in its raw state after I mixed it up with paint. And then I coated it again um, with my brown latex paint, which becomes the basic dirt color. You can always let some of that show through. Okay, here's a little bit closer look of what's going on here. Um, and you'll see now the track. What I did is you saw that cork. That's N-scale cork. And I use N-scale cork alongside the track. Why? Because our track is too high. It's it, The ties are twice as high as they should be. N-scale cork placed outside the track does two things. It cuts down the height of the tie. It helps... Um, uh, the ballast stay in place, plus it gives you a nice little ballast form to follow. Um, makes it a lot easier. Uh, and now here we go. This is what I ended up doing. This part looks a little bit odd right now because it's still wet. It was wet when I took the photograph. I just did this today. Um, uh, and this is darker because it's still a little bit wet. This is a combination of my um, yard ballast, which is very dark, and my superior sand coarse and fine. Um, let's see, we'll just go here. This, this will give you another little shot of it. Um, I use, on sidings, um, lots of times they just use whatever on sidings. It's not going to be mainline ballast, although some might do that. But this was just uh, this kind of dark uh, ballast. Uh, and, and I had the superior sand is all these other little colors here. The, the um, yard ballast is real dark. It's all this dark stuff here. But the superior sand is, is dark, but it's got all these um, little shades of other rocks in it, and it really makes it pop. And you see, I, I went along here. I didn't do any 
kind of scenery work here. I wanted to show you how I was doing this. And of course, on a hillside, this is going to slope down um, and ballast is going to run down uh, and, and go along here and here. And here, here you get a much closer look of the, uh, the yard ballast and the superior sand. And you can see it really creates a nice natural looking texture. And I've got fine, the fine superior sand is lo along here. It's really fine. The regular superior sand is about the same size or the coarse superior sand is about the same size as my yard ballast, which this is right here, that dark stuff. But you can see how that really pops everything and it looks pretty natural. And here's, you know, here is um, how it's just going to run down like this. Now, of course, um, this is not finished. This is just the the base, the base covering, if you will. I will be adding bushes and weeds and and whatnot to this. And so uh, that basically um, that basically takes care of it. Um, let me see. We started here. And we're ending up with something like this. And um, um, I think the next time we'll have some scenery along here. And uh, I don't know whether I'll get to the street or not, but I might. Anyway, uh, I've, I've got about four minutes left. Um, I tried to keep this brief. So I will end this now. If somebody has questions or you want to talk about something, we've got a, three minutes if Jim gives me the time. All right. Oh, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Well, does anybody have any questions? Anything? Comments? Criticisms? I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, I think, I think you may have covered it for this evening. We'll see you next week.